We've all been really, really sick. It's like they keep bringing home diseases after disease after disease. And uh, yeah, no one's fared well. And everyone, it seems, has caught something from the children that go to public school. No matter how good the school is, they're catching something. So, I saw a video. I think it was a video. It was an interview of a scientist. He was sitting there talking about life extending medical science and what they found. Um, basically, you got four things in your DNA that are going to extend your life or shorten your life, depending on what you do to your body. That's the short of it. Should we? I think that's the, probably the most important question. Should we be promoting this? Should we be looking this up? Should we be advancing this tech? And I think the answer is yes. There's going to be headaches. And uh, I think there probably should be some regulation to it as a when you can apply this to yourself. But well, that's a further discussion. But you look in the Bible and they sit there and they talk about, and this isn't just the Bible, but it's my reference for the day. And they've got people living in the Bible 600, 900, 1200 years. Now, if you actually believe we've been stupid up until recently, I've got a bridge to sell you. We haven't always been stupid and we haven't always been grounded and living in caves. So anyways, they're using this tech, and I swear the scientist used it on himself considering what he said his age was. Um, but you think about, you know, in a normal person, not the deranged, but in a normal one, as they get older, you do become wiser. And there's certain things that you wish you could have redone in your youth that is just stupidity. You become more responsible, you think more about your fellow man, not just yourself. You realize that you're in the environment, not just, you know, using the environment, that everything has consequences. And that's what age does to you. It teaches you things. It shows you that it's not just about you. Now, where in youth, you're a moron. You tend to think that you know it all. And that everyone else is an idiot. And I think if you can extend human beings and their lifespan, one, you'd make the world a better place because the older generation would, well, one, they'd be more numerous. And two, they'd be able to teach better. It's hard to teach when you're, you know, stuck. You can't run around with the youth because the point of the... Uh, age extension or life expectancy, whatever you want to it, isn't to extend it and still be feeble-minded and rolling around in a wheelchair. It's to have a good quality of life, and that's what they're working on. And I think that's what they've achieved. All in all, I think it would be very good for man. I think people would become more responsible. The pressure of, I can't do anything past 40, because that's when my youth is there, that's when my health is there. That's when you have babies would be erased. Now it's there's no there's no race anymore. It's learn. You're always going to have the idiots, yes. But now it's I don't have to race to have babies. I don't have to race to have a family. I can have my education and still, you know, settle down into a family. I can become stable in life and then have a family. Cuz you no, know, as soon as they come out with these life extending They'll have better ways of contraception that isn't so, well, damaging. Because I think the pill is very damaging hormonally. And things that are much more reliable and less uncomfortable than a condom. Life sucks. Anyway, you think on that aspect. So anyways, when we get into what they actually do. These four things is, uh, well, it's, we evolve two ways. One is when things are good, we reproduce. Copy ourselves. That's when life is great, you copy yourself. When life isn't great, the body and the cells themselves 
go into an immortality type stage. It heals itself. It becomes more resilient. It repairs DNA molecules. Things of that nature. That's what it does. So in the science, when they were realize that this is what happens when the body is struggling. Ah, that's what we'll monopolize on. And so that's what they were doing. And they found that if they only do three of the four, as far as um, genetic engineering, because if you do all four, you end up with a cancer because it's cells just reproducing uncontrollably. But if you do three of the four, you literally will repair into an early life, earlier life stage of your body, the youthful life stages. <laughs> but there's something you can do as an individual without the drugs to extend your life, which is what I kind of think that the ancients did. Or maybe they had some drugs to go with it and plants that are no longer here, but he said, these, uh, I can remember three of them, these three things trigger the body into going into repair mode. Being a little uncomfortable means being a little cold, being a little bit too hot, being uncomfortable. The body recognizes this as not a very good situation to be in. Must repair, must go into immortality mode to help body. Now, mind you, the other thing that goes with that is there's one that recognizes how much amino acids, no, not them, how much protein you're taking in and how much sugar you're taking in. And those work with the others. So it recognizes these things. So you're a little too cold and you're not getting so much protein or so much sugar. Hmm. Need to repair, need to hunker down, need to extend your life so when the next good time comes, you're able to reproduce. That's what the body does. So if you stay constantly, it's not just, oh, I'm a little cold for an hour a day. That's not gonna work. It's a lifestyle almost sounds like the Green New Deal. But anyways, maybe that's what they're trying to do. They're not trying to kill us. They're trying to extend our lives. I'm kidding. So a little cold, just lived that way. A little too hot, kind of lived that way. Instead of setting your thermostat at my comfortable 80 degrees, yes, I would, I would cook all of you. I shall live at 62 degrees and make my husband happy and freeze my onions off. <laughs> I shall not eat any sugar because it tells the body that life is good. Starve yourself of sugar. The protein. I shall cut that down. By the way, just so you guys know, protein does, if you eat enough of it, will turn into sugar. I shall cut that down. Thereby, the body goes into repair mode Extend your telomeres. Those of you who don't know what that is, go look it up. Repairs your DNA. Gets rid of the faulty stuff. And basically, it sounds like, you know, intermittent fasting. And that was very, very popular back in the ancient days when these people lived for hundreds of years. It was fasting. It go, I don't know, months? It was every week you fasted. This is the day we don't eat. It makes you kind of wonder, how much food does a human really need to eat? Some people go, oh, it's 1,200 calories, 2,000 calories. Yes, and if you believe that logic, there is a whole country of diabetics out there waiting to listen to your superior intellect. But it does make you wonder, how much did they eat back then? Because all of my research, because I love history. History is your greatest teacher. It is. And every time they ever talked, it was like literally they ate once a week and they, they snacked every other day. That's what it looked like. Once a week there was this giant feast and everybody ate. And every other time they were snacking. I think they were getting a lot of calories from wine because that seemed to be the, the one thing that they were all doing. Only the rich had fruit. The animals mostly ate. And when they talked about the shepherds going out, yeah, you have to go through biblical references mostly. They didn't take lunch with them. Shepherd's girl would bring something, but it would be like a real, it would be what we would consider a small snack. 
So they did a lot of fasting type things, whether it just, you know, cal calorie deficient or just straight out not eating. And they're the ones that were living hundreds of years. And in this day and age, yeah. So if we go by that standard and all you preppers out there with like 10 years worth of food in your bucket, you've now extended your life 100 years of 100 years of food. <laughs> Anyways, I thought that was really interesting. Uh, to me, it just, it tells you that I think it'll be within my lifetime that life extension technology will definitely be here and it'll be available. And it probably will only be available to the uber rich as they try and figure out a way of, oh, the world will become under, or not under, overpopulated. Well, yeah, if you give it to all the 20 year olds because they're still stupid. <laughs> yeah, they're right on that one. I think there has to be an age that's appropriate for it to happen. I think uh, between you know, after 35 seems to be a good age. It seems like after 35, brain cells begin to develop. Yeah, even talking about myself, I can tell you it's like, oh, at 28, I woke up and said, boy, I was dumb. At 32, I woke up and said, oh, I was still dumb. So yeah, it's you, you learn, you figure it out. I don't think it'll do a, ma a major overpopulation issue. I think what happens is people, well, they grow and learn. When you get older, there's a reason why older people aren't just having babies left and right. And if they do have babies, they're having one. Because they know. And then when you get older, you want to try and teach the youth. And the youth is hard for them to listen to you if you look, if they look at you and see, well, you don't have any babies. You can't even have babies. Your worries are over. But when they see the vibrant and they're older and they're running around, they'll go, I want that. I want what they have. And that's when they pay attention to you.